Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to have a go at modelling a chocolate wrapper inside of Maya. So I'm just going to jump to my front view by holding space, clicking and then going to front view. I'm going to go to view, image plane and import image. And on my desktop I have got my reference image here. I'm going to select it oh, just to scale it up a little bit. I'm going to add in a cube, so we can either do that on the shelf up here, go to create polygon primitive cube, or I like to hold that space and go that way and we're going to just make this bigger so on to vertex mode dragging it box selecting vertices and dragging to the right size i'm going to go multi-cut right in the middle right click go to face and delete this side because we're going to mirror it across we go to shading and x-ray so we can see what we're doing so i'm going to grab multi-cut down on the right hand side, hide on control and just click about there. And I'm going to add another cut about here. Hold down, press W, sorry, hold down, right click, go to vertices, box select these two, and then come up. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom, select these and come down. So it's about the rough shape of our chocolate bar. I'm just going to come to the top view, select. Follow that, right click to R, scale it in like that. I'm also just going to grab that reference image, hit W, and just move it back out of the way, like that. We're going to turn off X-ray mode for a second so we can see what we've got. Now I'm going to start adding in those details. So let's go to the front view, shading, and X-ray. Go to multi cut. Click on the object first, then go to more cut and click anywhere and then shift right uh, and middle mouse button click to go in the middle. Then go into double click the edge, control B to bevel, make the fraction as big as you can go. Start adding in some segments. Let's do six. Pause, let's do seven. I'm going to just grab those and delete them and do one more down at the top and the bottom there. And I'm going to go to vertex mode, box select every other selection. I should have done more because I'm going to run out, so let's just undo a second. And let's bring that up again. Do eight. Let's grab those two. And then let's do the same as before. Now let's box select. So hopefully I've done this right this time around. There we go. Hit W. Just move those down like that. So we've got like the little crinkly bits. We're then going to do the same across this surface here. So let's go to multi cut again. I'm going to hold our control and middle mouse button click. I want that to be straight, so I'm going to go to edge mode, press R, and then scale it flat. Then I'm going to do control B. Let's add in a couple more segments. Let's do four. Let's make it a bit bigger, a bit like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an edge loop at the top, and then let's grab this edge and this edge, but I don't want to grab the top bits. So at the bottom, let's get rid of those bits. Hit W to move, and I'll drag in. We go to the front. Let's go to the top. Go to face mode, I'm just going to select all those faces at the back, and Control delete it to delete it as well. So we've just got this side here. Next, so we head down three, you can see what we're starting to get. It's starting to roughly get that sort of shape. I'm going to add in some extra loops, so what I'm going to do is go to edge mode. I'm going to grab all of these edges along here. I'm going to control B. 
pretty much leave that as that is. And then what we're going to do is go to multi-cut, kind of vertex mode, and let's work our way across like this. So I'm going to just connect them to this vertices. Just working your way down. That's one. Now I'm going to go to edge mode and just grab these edges and delete them because we don't need them anymore. Make sure to do control delete so you can delete the vertices that are there. Otherwise you end up with some weird results later on. There we go, if we down to three, let's see what's going on. Looking good, and then we're going to add some extra edges on these parts. Do control B to bevel. Three, see how it's looking. If you make it a bit tighter, you can always bring that fraction in a bit more. So what I might do is do two segments, bring it in. There you go, so you can see that a bit better. Maybe it was better. Let's just undo that a second. I'll be Yeah, that's probably a bit better, a little bit more subtle. Okay. So modeling side of that is done. Let's give that a quick save. And then we're going to mirror it. So let's grab that object mode, hold on D, V, so we can move our axis point. So D, uh, V, and just click on that edge. Then we do shift, right click, go to mirror. And you see if we hadn't done that, we do well with this gap. So if I go to object mode, it'll snap. Go to vertex, or first of all, go to object mode, select both those, go to mesh, combine. Then go to vertex mode, select those, and go to edit mesh and merge. Then double click and delete. So you see that is one sort of piece. I'm going to do the same on the back. I'm going to get rid of this now because we don't need it. Object mode, again, DV. I'll move the pivot point, shift right click, go to mirror, object, and that will be in Z. And let's click both those, go to mesh, combine, let's go to top, vertices, let's grab, let's zoom in a bit more so we can see what we're doing, edit mesh, Merge, let's say right here, edit mesh, merge, and let's grab an edge, draw delete, hit three, and we've got the modeling side of our wrapper done. I'm going to give that a quick save. So I'm going to give that a quick mesh and smooth. 
there like that. Now, if you wanted to, what you could do is smooth that again, and then you could start to move the vertices to make it look a bit crinkly, but I'm actually going to do that inside of Marmoset anyway. Just looking, maybe I will smooth it one more time. Let's see how that looks. I get to mesh smooth. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. I'm going to go to File, Save. I'll just show you what I'm like. If I then go to, say, let's go to like edge mode. If I hit B for soft select, what I could do is like grab a particular edge there. Just pull it in just slightly. And it's quite subtle, but it just kind of looks like it's a bit more realistic. So what we've, we've started now, so let's just carry on with that. Let's grab that and we'll just, you don't want to overdo it, just a few darting around. It's very easy, as I often do, to like overdo those types of things. Just to stop it from being like a perfect rectangle, which it never would be. There you go, just something well that just so it breaks up from being like a perfect rectangle i'm going to give that a save so we're going to unwrap it so it should be relatively easy to unwrap so let's just go to uv and delete uvs i'm going to go to object mode uv uv editor I'll make it a bit smaller i'm going to Create a um, camera based to select. So, what we're then going to do is let's go to edge mode and grab this edge that so goes all the way around, which should be going all the way around. Okay, then what we don't want to do, we want to unselect everything from right here. So I'm gonna hold down tab and just paint select to undo these ones. Working your way around. Basically just not selecting the bottom ones. And this will just make it look a lot easier to do when it comes to texturing in Marmoset. Okay, so now let's bring this up. Shift right click go to cut, UV, grab it and unfold. And there we have our shell. Let's just check we've not got any overlapping bits. I think we're okay. So I'll do E to rotate, just rotate that round. We can check that we've got it all even. Let's turn on our checker marker just for a second. So we have everything. All we're looking for with UVs is checking that there's no sort of like distortion. You haven't got some squares, some rectangles, or like squashed in really, really weird ways. Um, it doesn't always matter that they're the right way around. For this, it kind of does. Typically, if it's something that's going to have like a stick of the right way around, or like a grain, like wood, or something like that, obviously the direction of the squares matters. If it's going to be like a plastic or a metal where it's not brushed and it doesn't really matter, um, there's no sort of like way of showing which way around it goes. It doesn't actually really matter, but in this instance, it's pretty easy anyway. Right, that is unwrapped. I'm just going to close that. I'm just going to add a material ID. So all I'm going to do, select that, get a material blend, and just call it wrapper. File and save, and then. Select all, 
Brief transformations and delete history. Select, and I'm going to go to File, Export Selection, Desktop, I'll just call it Up to Texture. And then the last little bit, we're going to jump up to Marmoset to have a go at texture in it. Okay, so we're now in Marmoset. All I've done is brought my model and just baked my map. So the first thing I do is going to render and just turn on ambient occlusion, get ray traced, and then add in our lighting. So I go to Windows, Library, and I'd like to just add in three point lighting. And then turn that brightness down a little bit, like that. Okay, so now we're going to start adding our material. So let's start by adding in a fill layer. Materials, Albedo, let's grab. We go to our reference images. I have a map already. So then let's change it to UV. And then edit it slightly. So let's. There we go, that's the right one. Bring it into position. Let's just bring it other way. Something like that. Let's then add in another material. Bring in this crinkle paper. Bring it up to the top. We'll turn off our beta. Turn off the roughness, turn off mattiness. In fact, it's just the bump that we want. Now I can sort of play around with how crinkly I want to have it. I'll vary to not at all, just want a little bit subtleness. Something like that. Just so when you rotate it, you can sort of see a little bit crinkled. Yeah, I think if we go anything like that, it gets a bit too much. Let's bring it down a bit. Like that. Let's bring that roughness down so it's a bit more shiny. And we are pretty much done. So it's quite an easy one to texture. Once you've got UVs right, it's really, really easy just to fit our sort of template of our actual wrapper on there nice and easy. Let's just see now that I've done that. Yes, something like that. And then what I guess we could always do if we want to do, let's give this a quick save. Is let's do fill layer. Just have it as the albedo. Let's do a black mask. Let's do dirt. Let's get our windows, our library up. It's like fingerprints, light. Let's grab that and put it into my grunge a little bit. See how it looks. That's way too much of the minute, so let's bring that down. Just something like that so there we go that we'll leave that there so hopefully you found this helpful and interesting if you got any questions please leave a comment down below or email me at design with simon at outlook.com